All right, hi, and welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vondren Legal Hour. All right, Attorney Steve Vondren here, licensed to practice law in California and Arizona, copyright infringement cases nationwide. So we are talking, the, the following podcast is general legal information only and not legal advice, but we are talking today about the top five California IP, intellectual property, legal verdicts. Okay, so I had somebody ask me over a, a dinner party the other night. Um, somebody said, well, what are like some of the largest verdicts in California um, in IP law? I was explaining you know, what IP law was and entertainment law, what I do and those kinds of things. And so they, I was asked, well, what is, what are like the top verdicts? And I said, well, you know, that's a good question. I don't know the actual dollar amounts, but I can find out. I'm attorney Steve. I can figure it out. So um, I did some looking into this out of general curiosity. And I have, I'm happy to report, I have the top, I don't know if they're the top five, but I have five good cases um, to tell you just, you know, how lucrative intellectual property law can actually be. There's actually a lot of promise to it. And um, let's go over those. So this is, again, not legal advice. These are, and bear in mind, bear in mind also that, you know, you know, some of these cases, they are overturned. Some of these cases are reduced. Um, so I may read an amount and it may actually have, the, the case may have been overturned. It may have gone up for appeal. It may be pending appeal. And the judge sometimes, the courts, will sometimes reduce the damage award. So this is general information. If you want to know the exact current status, you're going to have to go look it up. I can't make any guarantees or warranties on things like that. So this is just general information about things that happened, okay? Like things that I know happened. So um, case number one, and this one was a $2.3 billion whopper, $2.3 billion whopper. This is a case, Pace Setter Inc. versus Nervicon Company Limited, okay? So, but this was a case in the Los Angeles County Courts. This was a case dealing with misappropriation of trade secrets. Okay, so I tell people uh, quite often that, you know, one of the most overlooked areas of intellectual property law is actually trade secret law. And they say, well, and they'll ask me, what is trade secret? I mean, it sounds, sounds like, a, like a James Bond movie or something. And I say, no, um, trade secrets are anything that you have, a company has, this is general speaking, uh, by the way, anything you have that is, gives you a competitive advantage in your business. So one example that I love to give is the Colonel's secret recipe. Now they didn't want to disclose that to anybody. They didn't want to say, hi, here's my, here's my secret recipe. So they guard that as a trade secret. So does Coke, Coca-Cola and their formula. So these things are guarded, you know, literally guarded under lock and key. And, you know, it's, it's very limited access to who is going to get to know that information, who gets to know those recipes and things like that. So this was a case dealing with a former engineer who was found liable for using stolen trade secrets to start a competing company in China. So you see this quite often where... Let's say somebody's working at, um, you know, the, the latest, greatest technology company in Silicon Valley, software company, and they have all the trade secrets of this company, and they know everything that's going on, all the different marketing plans, all their, all their tools, all their confidential proprietary information, everything. And sometimes they get lured away. They get lured away, you know, by somebody saying, I can give you a better opportunity. I can pay you five times what you're making. Um, you can start a business with me, um, those kinds of things. So this, de this case dealt with a former engineer who was found culpable of using stolen trade secrets to start a competing company. So um, $2.3 billion. Now, I'm pretty sure, I think I read uh, somewhere along the way that this was reduced. Um, maybe it was under a billion, but still, think about it. That's amazing money. That's amazing money for trade secrets. 
So to me, that is top case number one, top case number one, Pace Setter Inc. versus Nervicon Limited. So you can go look that up. It's a case from 2011, and you can go check that out. But very interesting. Now, the second one I have, case number two, Mattel Incorporated. Mattel Incorporated versus MGA Entertainment Inc. And this is a misappropriation of trade secrets, a doll maker's dispute. Doll makers dispute ownership of toy doll product line. Okay, so this is case involves Mattel, the maker of Barbie dolls. Most people know that Mattel makes Barbie dolls, and um, dealing with a former employer of of Carter Bryant who left Mattel to join MGA MGA Entertainment Inc., who is the maker of the Bratz dolls, B R A T Z Bratz dolls. And Mattel alleged that Bryant, the former employee, breached a confidentiality and inventions agreement by taking his ideas for the Brad stalls. So um, again, it's another another one of those cases dealt with an injunction barring MJ from selling most of its Brad stalls. So that's again, it gets tricky when you're trying to lure employees away. You could be found to be interfering with an existing contractual relationship. And you also, when you're the new employer, you have to ask, you know, did you sign any agreements? Did you sign any non-disclosures? Did you, do you have any trade secrets that we need to be aware of? Because you can't just, you, you know, as a new employer, generally speaking, you can't just you know, take whatever you can get, lure people away, get their trade secrets, and expect that you might not have a problem, especially where you're creating competing products. So this was an interesting case. 88 million, 88.5 million is where this one came back. This is so that, I mean, that was, I mean, that's quite a significant award. So I, again, these can be gigantic cases and trade secrets. The hidden area, I call it the hidden area in intellectual property law. All right, moving on. Number three in our top five, Concept Chaser Company, Inc. versus Pentel of America Limited. Got to love all these uh, corporate designations. So, But here was another case. Um, this was a breach of contract. Ad agency claimed that the pen maker stole ad ideas, a theft of idea, I guess you could say. A Los Angeles jury awarded nearly $33 million to a, comp- a couple, a husband and wife couple, that claimed that Pentel Corporation stole their marketing plan, stole their marketing plan for a $2 gel pen. So the case deals with the Pentel's $2 Hyper G, as they called it, Hyper G gel pen, and basically theft of their marketing idea. Um, the suit was filed by the husband and wife, owners of Concept Chaser, an ad agency in El Segundo. They claim that Pentel stole their marketing, uh, their plan, their marketing plan to market the pen to college students instead of doctors and professionals through the use of a smooth writing contest. Okay, The defense argued Pentel came up with the marketing ideas on its own, independent creation, but the award, the final award, eight, uh, excuse me, not um, 32.875 million, $32 million. So this is, again, theft of ideas, theft of marketing plans, theft of customer lists, theft of things that could be considered a trade secret can lead to gigantic, gigantic uh, liability cases. So that is con- the concept case. Next, we have Trust Company of the West, TCW as they call it, versus Goonlatch. Goonlatch, and this is for misappropriation of trade secrets. This is dealing with bond firms, you know, a bond firm that alleged its former worker stole proprietary information. 66.7 million, 66.7 million. And this involved a fund manager who allegedly took trade secrets and violated his fiduciary duty to the firm. And there was a whole lot of whole lot of back and forth in this case, and even about um, there was there was allegations of a hard drive that was taken away from TCW 
in the bra of a woman who worked for the defendant. So it's really interesting. That's theft of a trade secret, right? If you take, take something, you put a disc in your bra, and you're sneaking out of work. So those were the allegations. That was some of the testimony that came up. This case ended up at 66.7 million misappropriations of trade secrets. Again, the hidden child in intellectual property law, and that's you know something good to mark. So finally, that's number four. Finally, we had a $1.1 million, doesn't sound like a lot after all that, but nonetheless, um, a $1.1 million case dealing with Falcon Stainless Incorporated versus Rhino Co's Inc., and uh, Falcon Stainless was a leading provider of flexible water connectors. And they filed a lawsuit against Rhino Companies and John Novello individually for falsely advertising that their products meet industry minimum thickness standards. I know that doesn't sound exciting to a lot of people. It's not quite as sexy as the, uh, as the uh, putting something in your bra and sneaking out kind of thing. But um, this case was dealing with with trademarks. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth. I don't know what the current status of the case is. I heard that it was, I don't know if it was reversed or up on appeal. But again, any of these cases that I'm mentioning today could have been reversed, could be up on appeal. This is not necessarily the final resolution or how the case was finally disposed of, but should give you some good ideas of the types of cases that could be raised in California courts, in state courts, or federal courts. So this is Attorney Steve. This is my top five California legal verdicts in the area of IP law. So I hope that gives you a good idea. And obviously the theme of this case is trade secrets. And you got to be very careful when you're leaving a company. If you're an employee, you can't just leave, take all everything and just do whatever the heck you want unless you don't have a trade secret agreement. If you don't, unless you don't have a non-disclosure or some type of severance agreement that tells you what you can and can't do, you know. Um, so, but again, new employers, you got to find out what they knew. You got to find out what they signed because you could unwittingly find yourself in a gigantic trade secret theft lawsuit um, because you didn't ask the questions. And not asking the questions to me is never the the right way to do it. The right way to do it because you don't want to you don't want to develop a great product only to find out you know, one or two years into it that somebody wants all your profits, they want an injunction, they've got a trademark lawsuit, and some jury says, you know, this is really foul, uh, we don't care about large corporations, you guys are making tons of money anyway, $60 million, a billion dollars, so, um, so anyway, so this is general legal information only, again, I can't confirm all the facts and stats and final outcomes, that's going to be up to you if you really want to dig into it. So, but this is some general information about things that have happened. If you need help in a trade secret, business dispute, copyright infringement, entertainment law, you know where to find us. AttorneySteve.com. That's AttorneySteve.com, the first name in legal services. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for your support. You guys have been great, everybody, and we really appreciate it. So go ahead and like this video, share it. Do whatever you want with it. Have some fun with it. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. We look forward to another busy week. Um, so hope you're all having a great weekend. We're out of here. We'll talk again. Bye now.